Boy, my homeboy Ryan Hall, <laughs> he knows how to push my button for sure. Make my blood boil a little bit. Make me think I want to go there and I'm tough enough to smoke one of them rocks. Wait till you see. Now get ready for this. Grab your popcorn and your butter. To hear what the governor of North Carolina is going to say to you. We work with them. We have plans for local governments. You know, in some areas, you just shouldn't build back. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to convince certain communities and people that buyouts are better. What did the governor of North Carolina just say? Notice the thing at the top. Something about climate.org or some shit. But he tells the reporter that it's most people shouldn't build back. They shouldn't build back on their own property. And we're trying to convince them, or we're going to convince them, it's much better for them to take the money. If that don't stink like high heaven, speculation now, sounds like to me that all the theories are coming true, right? That it might have been some type of manipulated weather control because Abelmar, who's owned by Vanguard and BlackRock, and Abelmar, who's also owned by Harris's vice president, husband, whatever, right? Might have a super interest in lithium. And the governor of North Carolina is trying to convince his people, ah, you shouldn't rebuild back on your property. You should take our deal. Hey, governor of North Carolina, <laughs> so glad you spoke up and showed your true colors. Because me and the American people would like to remind you to go Fuck yourself sideways because that shit ain't happening on me my watch or Ryan's watch or American Patriots watch people will rebuild back on their fucking homelands and do what they want to do promise you that over our dead bodies bet that motherfucker fluid English now I'd be remiss if I didn't address the elephant in the room you know, you're all thinking about it. Let me just cut to the point and point out who's not here. And of course, I'm talking about the middle class. <laughs> that filthy group of people. Right, Chuck? Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know about you. I think this is exciting. This is very exciting, right? We... We are 19 days until the election, and likely a civil war. <laughs> and, you know, I'm nervous, you know what I mean? It's like, this is my first civil war, guys. <laughs> we are 19 days until the election, and likely a civil war. An Afghan refugee charged with plotting a U.S. Election Day massacre. Nothing surprises me. What about that, though? Are you expecting chaos on Election Day? No, I don't think it's not from the side that votes for Trump. But I'm just wondering if these outside agitators will start up on Election Day. Let's say you win. I mean, let's not let's let's remember you've got 50,000 Chinese nationals in this country in the last couple of years. Yeah. You have people on the terrorist watch list, 350 in the last couple of years. You got. Uh, like you said, 13,000 murderers and 15,000 rapists. Right. Um, what are you expecting? Joe Biden said he doesn't think it's going to be a peaceful election day. Well, he doesn't have any idea what's happening in all as He spends most of his day sleeping. Uh, I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come. destroying our country by the way totally destroying our country the towns the villages they're being inundated but i don't think they're the problem in terms of election day i think the bigger problem are the people from within we have some very bad people we have some sick people radical left lunatics and i think they're the and and it should be very easily handled by if necessary by national guard or if really necessary by the military uh, they, because they can't let that happen. You told me back in February that you were going to rent out Madison Square Garden for a rally. Yeah. And now you're going to do it at the end of October. Not only Madison Square Garden, we're taking four or five arenas. We fill them up very fast. As you know, we took where the Islanders play in Long Island. We had, I guess, 22, 23,000 people, and we could have sold it out literally three times. We had thousands of people 
we had tens of thousands of people that couldn't get in. We put screens on the outside of the building so they could see it. But that was incredible. And we just signed on Madison Square Garden. Uh, we're probably going to make a deal in Atlanta. We're trying to get the Atlanta Arena. And we fill them up in, in minutes. And there's a great enthusiasm.